Well, who among us has not dealt at one time or another with major self-doubt when it comes to homeschooling? Now, if you are a first-year homeschooler, then chances are you are in an almost constant state of self-doubt because it can be such a huge and scary and uncertain transition into homeschooling. And so I wanted to talk not just to the first-year homeschoolers, but to anybody who is dealing with self-doubt when it comes to homeschooling. I have four suggestions I'd like to give you that I think are going to help you to not just kick that self-doubt to the curb, but help you throughout your homeschool journey to be able to trust yourself, trust the process, and enjoy the adventure. So the first thing, and you hear us say this all the time, those of us who are veteran homeschoolers, we tell you, uh, you new homeschoolers, and you, those of you who are kind of at the, towards the beginning of your journey, you hear us say this all the time, but even we occasionally get caught up in this comparison. Oh my word, comparison is the worst. It is one of the biggest contributors to self-doubt because we look not just at what our kid would be doing if they were in public school. Maybe you know you still have friends whose kids are the same age as yours and they're still in public school and you hear about what they're doing, you see what they're doing, or there's kids in the neighborhood and, and you, know, you see all the, the projects that they bring home and you hear about all the activities, or you're comparing yourself even to the other homeschoolers in your area, the homeschoolers maybe that you get together with at co-ops or playdates or um, you know that you meet at the park and you hear about the field trips that they're going on and the curriculum that they're doing, all the things that their kids are learning, and you compare what you're doing to them or you compare what your kids would be doing to or what they are doing to what they would be doing if they were still in public school. Now, here's the thing. I know it's really easy to say don't compare and it's really hard not to actually do it. But one of the things that I think can really help us to, to finally overcome that comparison thing is to realize that there is not just one way to educate. There is not one main body of knowledge and skill that results in a uh, you know an official education. And if your kid has all this, then yes, they are officially educated and, and you've done everything that you can and all the right stuff, right? That's not how it works. We have been kind of indoctrinated into thinking that there's one, one education and that that's what we're all supposed to be striving to do, even as homeschoolers. Oh, this is, this is the education we should all be aiming for. But that's not how it works. And that is one of the awesome benefits to homeschooling is the fact that you can chuck that idea of one education out the window and say education should be as unique as kids are. Every single child is different. Why in the world would we think all of them should learn the same thing? How does that make any sense at all? What? When would you ever look at an entire population and say there's one white, right way for everybody everybody here to be doing this one thing. That makes no sense, right? And yet we look at education and we think, oh no, well, they, they have to have this and they have to do that and they have to study this and they have to memorize that. And, and if they don't, are they really educated? Well, you know what? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yes, they are actually educated. Even if they've never read Shakespeare, even if they have never uh, taken geometry, even if they can't locate Asia on a map. Okay. Now, are there things that it would be really good for all people to know? Well, it would be good for all people to know basic math. It would be good for all people to know how to read. So I suppose maybe we can say, um, you know, reading and writing and speaking and basic math are things that pretty much everybody should have to one level or another, okay? To one level or another. That is the key to remember because does everybody need to know advanced math? No. Should everybody probably know like the basics? Well, yeah, you know, but is it the end of the world if your child goes out in the world and does not yet know all of the intricacies of let's say percentages? Okay. Um, no, it'd be great for them to know that information, but guess what? They can learn it later. They can learn it when they need to. They can learn it when they get burned for not learning it, for not already knowing it, right? Sometimes 
The only way we are truly going to learn something is because we actually see the relevance for it. So remember this too, just because you're teaching it does not mean your child is absorbing and learning it. So when we look at education and we think about all of these things that we think education should have, we need to remember that everybody is different. Everybody's paths are different. Everybody's interests are different. Everybody's abilities are different. And so we cannot say there is one body of education that every single person ought to have, except maybe those basics. But you know what? I'm pretty sure you're teaching those. So I think we're probably fine there. But when it comes to everything else, learning how to write an essay, knowing, um, you know, knowing what an adverbial clause is, uh, knowing all of the reasons for why Rome fell, okay? All good information to know, but not necessarily stuff that every single person has to have. So when we can finally look at education and see it as something that can be and should be diverse, that should reflect the diversity of our world, and that not everybody needs to do and learn the same things, then it becomes a lot easier not to compare because then we can look at other people and what they're doing and say, wow, that's so fantastic that their kids are learning that stuff. Good for them. That's awesome that their kids are interested in that. That's awesome that they're that type of family. That's not us. <laughs> We're just not like that. That's not what my kids are interested in. And maybe someday they will see a reason for why they want to learn that and then they can. There is no expiration date on education. So just because they're not learning it now does not mean that they never will, right? So that is one of the best ways to help yourself to stop comparing is by realizing that there is not one body of education that or body of knowledge that creates an education, an official education. There is no such thing as an official education that we're all striving for. That's not what it's about, okay? So celebrate what other people are doing, take ideas from what other people are doing. Oh, I never would have thought to do that. What a great idea. I'm totally going to try that. Uh, and then if you try it, your kids love it. Fantastic. And if they don't love it, you go, oh, well, we tried. Never mind. Let's move on. Right. And you don't have to say, oh man, we're not like them. Crap. I must be doing it wrong. No, you're not doing it wrong. You're doing you, which is the whole point, right? Doing you, doing your family, the way that education and homeschooling looks for your family. Okay, so that is the first way that we can conquer some of that self-doubt is to stop comparing and to stop thinking that there is one, uh, you know, one standard that we're all trying to reach. That's not what it's about. Okay, the second way that you can kick that self-doubt to the curb is to keep the benefits of homeschooling in front of you. It is really easy for us to identify all of our own weaknesses, all of the risks, all of the what ifs, all of the concerns that we have about homeschooling, right? And those are the things that start the self-doubt churning and that start us comparing and doing all these other things that we're trying not to do, right? But if you keep all of the benefits, all of the fantastic stuff that your kids are getting because you homeschool, if you keep that in front of you, if you keep that posted somewhere, even if it's just on sticky notes in your office or on your bathroom mirror or written on the inside of your planner or, you know, as, as the screensaver on your phone, okay? The reasons why homeschooling is going to be such a wonderful experience for your kids, that can give you like an anchor to hold on to, right? Okay, my kids may not love reading as much as I wish that they did, but my kids are going to have the experience of our family spending so much time together and of knowing that they have a safe base always and a solid relationship with their siblings and with their parents and that they have been raised in an environment that has encouraged them in their strengths and has stood beside them as they try to conquer and tackle their weaknesses and has never bullied them into thinking that they're less than just because they don't like reading. I would say that's a win. Like personally, I would love for my kids to go off into the world having a lifetime so far of their, you know, 18 years of time spent with family 
knowing that they are loved and they are supported and that they have been given the tools that they need to learn anything they want as they go out into the world. And to know that they have been, um, they've been raised in a family that has passed on solid values, that has prepared them for the world, that has raised them to have confidence and belief in their selves and a growth mindset. These are not things that would necessarily have happened if my kids had been in conventional school. And when we remember that there is no expiration date on learning and that our kids can learn anything that we maybe never got around to teaching or anything that we taught, but they didn't care, so they didn't really absorb it, they can learn all that stuff when they want to as the need arises. And sometimes that's what they need to just know that they've got the tools that they need and that when they go out into the world, they are prepared to be able to tackle whatever comes at them. And sometimes those kinds of life skills do not come with book learning. Sometimes it's just life as a family that teaches those kinds of skills. And they would not have picked them up if they were not spending time with the family. So think through all of the wonderful benefits that homeschooling is going to give your kids and put those somewhere where you can constantly be reminded this, this is why I'm doing this. On the days when I wonder, on the days when I'm depressed, on the days when I'm frustrated, I need to remember this is why we do this. This is why we sacrifice. This is why I gave up that free time, right? That time between, uh, you know, nine and two when I was like, I could go do whatever I wanted and I can't really do that anymore, right? This is why I gave it up. I'll have plenty of time to myself once my kids are out of the nest. And I am not saying that alone time is not something that many of us need, particularly those of us who are introverts. We need that alone time. And I'm not saying that we need to just suck it up and never have that time because, oh, someday we will. No, no, no. I know. For mental health, we need that alone time. But where we used to have it every day, but now we don't have it every day, or maybe maybe don't have as much of it every day as we used to, when we keep those benefits in front of us, that can help us remember, oh, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm doing this. So second thing that you've got to do to help yourself kick that self-doubt and that frustration to the curb is to keep the benefits in front of you. Take some time to write them down and put them somewhere where you will frequently be reminded and remember where that is. Don't put it in a safe place where you're going to lose it, right? Safe place is like code for I'm never going to find this again. So don't put it somewhere safe, put it somewhere obvious and then make sure that you are, are reminding yourself regularly to look back at that list. Don't forget those reasons. Don't let yourself get so tied up in the doubts and the concerns that you forget those reasons why you are doing this. The third way that we can kick the self-doubt the self to the curb is to block out the negativity. Now, I know that not all of you have a real supportive family when it comes to homeschooling. Or maybe even like your best friend was kind of looking at you like you had two heads when you said you were going to homeschool. And so now things are kind of weird. You don't feel like you have her support the way that you used to. Or some of you don't even have your spouse's support yet. They're kind of viewing this year as like a trial. Well, we'll see how this goes. We'll see if, you know, you can pull this off and if everybody survives and you don't kill each other. And, you know, they're skeptical. Your mom is skeptical. Your in-laws are skeptical. Your best friend is skeptical. Your neighbors are skeptical. And it can make you feel like you're totally in this alone and that you don't have any support. Well, for the people that you can, and I know that this does not necessarily work for all family members, but for the people that you can, you need to tell them that their support matters and that you need to be able to vent without them saying, well, maybe you should just give it up. Well, maybe you just need to put them back in public school. Well, maybe you're just not cut out for this. Give them a script if you have to. Hey, if I ever come to you complaining about homeschooling, just read this back to me or just remind me of X, Y, Z. Tell me to go look at my benefits list. <laughs> right? Give them a way to be supportive. They maybe just don't know how to be supportive because they don't understand. They don't get why you're even choosing to do this whole homeschooling thing. It doesn't make sense to them. And so they don't know how to be supportive because it's not a value for them. But if you have people who are actively antagonistic 
about homeschooling. And that goes for like family members too. You need to draw a boundary. You need to be upfront and honest with them and say, hey, this is a value that we have. I, I understand that you don't get it. I understand that you don't agree. And I appreciate that you care about our family, that you care about our kids, and that you're concerned. I totally get that. And I'm glad that you care so much that you're concerned. If you would ever like to hear the reasons why, or if you would like some recommendations of maybe you know a book or two to read that might help you understand why we've chosen this, let me know. I would be happy to hook you up with that. But it looks like our conversations always go south when we talk about homeschooling. And it's really hard for me to stay encouraged and stay positive about my homeschooling adventure when you are trying to, to bring me down. And so I think we need to take homeschooling off the table as a topic of discussion for now. It's just, it's something that we have decided we're going to do and no, you know, discussion is really going to change our minds on that. So rather than us getting frustrated with each other, let's just put that aside. Let's just let have this be a topic that we just aren't going to talk about right now. That's like the nice way to kind of pussyfoot around that and, and lay it out there, right? Uh, you can also just say, I'm not going to talk about homeschooling with you anymore. This topic is, is off the table. And you don't really have to justify yourself. You don't really have to explain yourself. That can be really, really hard to do. But you know what? Your family is your family. And you do not have to listen to everybody else's opinions. If you want to hear their opinions, then, you know, let them know. Hey, I'll let you know when I want to hear what you think about homeschooling. But until then, we're not going to talk about this anymore. This is the decision that we've made. You've got to give yourself a safe space. You have to know that when you go into conversations or you go into, uh, you know, big family dinners at holidays and things like that, that you're not going to be ambushed, that your kids aren't going to be quizzed, that you're not going to have to suddenly become a homeschool apologist who, you know, can spout off, you know, all of these statistics about how well homeschoolers do when they go to college and how they score on the SATs and, and all this kind of stuff. And so if you don't have that, if you don't have the security of knowing that when you go to family, you know, gatherings, it's, it's going to be safe, then you need to draw a boundary with those people. Hey, I would love to come to Christmas dinner. I'd love to come to Easter dinner, but I'm really concerned that you're going to start quizzing my kids again, or that you're going to, um, you know, start uh, criticizing my decision to homeschool. If that's going to happen, we would, we really don't want to have to deal with that. So can you assure me that we're just not going to talk about homeschooling? Can we just take that table, that, that topic off the table? And for those of you who have spouses, I know it's a little harder to do it if it's your, your spouse that you live with that does not agree. Um, and in that case, I would really encourage them to read Busting the Homeschooling Myths. That is the ebook that I wrote that tackles the top 10 biggest concerns and misunderstandings that people have about homeschooling. And I have found from the vast majority of people, particularly dads, it seems like dads a lot of times struggle with these things. The When they see the stats, which I've got in there, and they see the arguments and they see the explanation from somebody who was a classroom teacher, from somebody who did the whole conventional school thing as staff, as faculty, I was in there. That was, that was what I was teaching. So I've seen it from the inside. I know what the agenda is. I know what it is like for your kids in these classrooms. And that's why I never put my kids in public school. So you can say, hey, a teacher wrote this book and she talks about the whole socialization thing. She talks about the college thing. She talks about um, the, the financial side of it. She talks about all of those milestones and those kind of like big rites of passage that you're concerned about our kids missing. It's all in this book. And it's short, y'all. It's like two pages for every myth for the most part, except for the socialization one. That one's bigger because there's a lot more going on there. But you can read the whole thing in like, you know, an hour or two. It's really, it's, it's not going to take long. So encourage them to educate themselves because nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, 
They just don't know, right? They haven't spent the time researching that you have. They haven't been in the mom groups, seeing people talk about homeschooling. They haven't sat and had coffee with that friend who is always homeschooled and gotten all of their concerns and questions answered, right? And so they still have them all in their heads and there's, they're legitimately concerned about their kids, which, hey, it's their kids. Of course they're concerned, right? And so that's when you got to say, look, I want to help you understand how awesome homeschooling can be. I want you to see all of the benefits. Show, you, show them your benefits list. Look at all of the things our kids are going to get because we homeschool. Maybe make a list of things they're not going to get because you homeschool. Bullying, the negative sides of socialization, the sleep deprivation, right? Look at all of the things our kids are not going to have to deal with that so many other kids are dealing with. They won't have to mess with that because we homeschool. Figure out what is it? What is it that is making your spouse hold back from being all in with homeschooling? And you know, you can't, you can lead a horse with water, but you can't make them drink, right? You can download the ebook for them and give it to them. You can point them in the direction of, of, of information. You can't force them to consume it, right? But keep communication open with your spouse and do everything that you can to reflect back all of the awesomeness about homeschooling and encourage them to come over here to the, the Good Schooling page and to join us in exploring homeschool and ask their questions. They can come in and ask any questions that they want to. I'm always happy to field questions from skeptical moms and dads who have not totally bought in on this homeschooling thing yet. Absolutely, bring them in, let them ask their questions so that they can hear firsthand how these things you know, aren't the issue that they think they are or how you can manage these things. Or, yeah, that is, you know, one of the downsides, but let's look at the upside that you're getting, you know, alongside of that, right? So that is the third thing to help you kick that self-doubt is to get yourself a bubble of safety, right? Your home, your relationships, you need to have, you need to have safety. You need to have a space where you know you're gonna be encouraged. And that's kind of the flip side of that too. When you're setting up these boundaries, right? To keep the negativity out, you need to find a way to get the encouragement in. And one of the ways that you can do that is by leveling up your own skills and knowledge as a homeschooling parent. And the best way that I have to recommend that you do that is to join us in The Confident Homeschooler. Knowledge is power, right? Uh, the more you know, right? The more you know, the more confidence you have. Not just knowledge about skills, how to teach certain things, or how to structure your time, or how to schedule your day, or how to keep these records in a way that's you know going to work for the state, or how to prepare your kids for college, how to prepare, all of these different skills. This is all stuff, yes, that you're going to learn in The Confident Homeschooler, but not only that, you are going to have all of the encouragement of our community around you. All these other parents who are on the same journey, who are also trying to work and homeschool the way that you might be, who are also homeschooling kids with special needs like you might be, who are also homeschooling with family members and maybe even spouses who are not on board. I can almost guarantee you that whatever your situation is, we've got somebody in the Confident Homeschooler membership community who will be able to raise their hand and say, oh, same, me too. I'm right there with you. I know exactly what that's like. I'm dealing with the exact same thing. When you've got that encouragement around you and you have a clear path for how to level up your homeschooling skills and level up in your knowledge about how kids learn and about how, um, how to teach certain things and how to do you know, all of the, the nitty gritty implementation stuff, right? When you have those things under your belt, the doubt goes away because you know, well, I'm, I'm doing everything that I could possibly do to make myself better equipped, better encouraged, to have better boundaries, to have the knowledge that I need, to know that I am doing everything that my kids need me to do. And when you can confidently say that, there's no room for doubt. What, what is there to doubt? You know that you've got everything you need. You have all the resources. You have the community coming alongside of you and helping you, uh, you know, brainstorm and troubleshoot. 
you have personal coaching that you can schedule anytime to sit down with you and say, all right, let's hammer this out. In fact, you could set, you could schedule private coaching so that you and me and your skeptical, 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 yeah, <laughs> skeptical spouse can all sit down together and they can ask me their questions directly and we can work through how exactly this is going to work to give your kids the education that that spouse is worried that their kid's not going to get, right? So whether you are in this alone or whether your spouse is right there with you, when you join the Confident Homeschooler, you're going to be able to have that support. You're going to be able to level up. You're going to have a clear path. When you first join, I show you exactly what to do to leverage the membership so that you are making the most of your time and your money and you are learning what you need to learn based on where you are on your personal homeschooling path so that you don't have to worry about, am I getting the right stuff? Am I doing the right thing? That's, you know, getting rid of that overwhelm and that confusion is one of the main things that we do so that you don't have the doubt and so that you do have the confidence. So I hope that this has helped. Remember, stop comparing, keep the benefits in front of you, block out the negativity and get in all of the support and encouragement that we have to offer you in the Confident Homeschooler. This right here, launchmyhomeschool.com. If you go there, you're going to learn more about Confident Homeschooler and how you can join. Just just said, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the videos. They've been super helpful. Oh, I am so glad that you said that. Thank you so much. It's always nice to hear that these are, you know, hitting the, uh, hitting the things that I hope that they'll hit, that they're helping, right? That's why I do it. And I'm so glad to hear that they are helpful for you. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. I appreciate that, Jess. And I hope that you will consider joining us in The Confident Homeschooler too. I would love to come alongside you and help you to give your kids the education that you want them to have. All right, y'all, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. If you are um, in Texas with me, uh, get warm. <laughs> Do not drive out on those scary roads. And um, I will talk to you all later. Have a great Valentine's Day, great weekend, and I will see y'all soon. Take care. Bye.